Welcome back everyone to Learning with Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're gonna be solving problem 1796, okay? So it says, the spool has a mass of 100 kilograms and a radius of duration of kg equal to 0 0.3 meters. If the coefficient of static and kinetic friction at A are mu of s equal to 0 0.2 and mu of k equal to 0 0.15 respectively, determine the angular acceleration of the spool if p is equal to 50 newtons, okay? So what do we have in here? Well, we have this pool, and we're being pulled by our force P, which is equal to 50 newtons, right? So what happened is that we're rotating in this, we're gonna start rotating on this direction, and we're gonna have an acceleration, and that's what we're trying to find, the angular acceleration. But like always, let's first start with um, writing out our givens. So we're given that the mass of this pool is equal to 100 kilograms. We're also given that our radius of duration is equal to case of g is equal to 0 0.3 meters. We're given the coefficients of static friction, 0 0.2, and the coefficient of kinetic friction, which is equal to 0 0.50. And finally, we're given that our force P is equal to 50 newtons. Okay, so like always, after writing out our givens, we're just going to go ahead and do a free body diagram. So we have a free body diagram of our spool in here. So it's just basically a circle, right? So let's assume it looks something like this. Then uh, what forces do we have? Well, we have the force P that goes from left to right like this and we know it's 50 newtons so we got those 50 newtons we also have well we have a mass therefore we have a weight so we have the weight i'm gonna call it w for weight we're gonna have the normal force at my point a right so we have the normal force that this floor is applying in here at a so i'm gonna call it normal at a and the last thing we have is, well, if we're rotating in this direction, the floor will want to create a friction between my spool. And if I'm rotating like this, that means that my frictional force will go left to right. So we're gonna have a left to right force, and I'm gonna call it F, F for uh, frictional force, okay? So those that will, conclude my free body diagram without any dimensions the dimensions we can take it from here these two guys over here and um, in order to solve for our angular acceleration what we're going to do is do the summatory of moments forces and find our angular acceleration like that so let me start with the summatory of forces in the x direction we're going to assume going to the right is positive and this is going to be equal to the mass times my acceleration in the x direction. And when I put this acceleration, my point of gravity, okay, of my uh, center of gravity. So we have um, 50 and frictional force. So we're going to add them up. So we got that our frictional force plus 50 has to be equal to the mass, which is 100 kilograms, times my acceleration in the x direction. Okay, so uh, this is our first equation. So far, that's all we can do with our uh, summatorial forces in the x. So I'm going to go ahead and do summatorial forces in the y direction, assuming that going up is positive, and Similarly, we're going to have mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Now, what I want us to pay attention is if this pole is rotating in this direction and is moving towards here, we're not moving neither up or down. Therefore, our acceleration will be zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put it equal to zero. And what forces do we have in the x direction? Well, we have minus w. So we got minus W, which W is 100 kilograms times 9.81 plus my normal at A. And all of that has to be equal to zero because that's all we have. So we have our equation equal to zero and we don't have any more forces. 
Now, from this equation, we can solve right away for my normal IA. And my normal A will be 981 Newton. Okay? So, um, we're still able to have one equation. We're going to do the summatory of moments about my point G. When I say my point G is going to be here, my center of gravity, G is the center of gravity, okay? We're going to assume that going counterclockwise is positive because that's how I like to um, think of it. And all of this is going to be equal to my moment of inertia times my acceleration. Now, this is my moment of inertia at G, okay? Now, I want us to remember that our moment of inertia can be rewritten as the mass times the radius of duration and my g is square, okay? So, what moments do we have? Well, if we're doing about this point, any force that passes through my line of action doesn't get count, just like the weight and just like the normal force. And the only two that we will have a moment about will be my frictional force and my 50 newtons. So we got my 50 newtons. We're gonna multiply it by the distance. Well, the distance is from here to here, and that is 250 millimeters. I'm going to multiply it in meters, so 0.25 meters. That force will create a clockwise direction, so I'm going to have a negative in here. Then I'm going to have a positive frictional force, so FF, multiplied by the distance. Well, in this case, the distance is my 400 millimeters, so 0 0.4. And all of that has to be equal to um my moment of inertia again so we're going to use that which is the mass so 100 kilograms times my radius of duration square is 0 0.3 in this case so 0 0.3 square and we're going to multiply this by my angular acceleration which is where we're trying to find okay so now what we can see is that we have our first equation and we have two equations however we have one, two, and three unknowns. So what else can we do? And for this, I had to go back to the book into our previous chapter, chapter 16, and utilize this equation that our acceleration, and G, so I'm gonna point it out in here, can be equal to my angular acceleration times the radius. And this is for any circular object, so circular object that rolls without slipping, okay? So this is very crucial for this for this problem, and um, we're going to utilize it, okay? So we have that our acceleration at my center of gravity is equal to my radius. Now, what is the radius? Well, the radius is 0 0.4 times my angular acceleration. And just like this, I can convert this into an equation with the same. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in there. So we got f of f plus 50. It's equal to 100 times 0 0.4 times my angular acceleration. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to convert this first equation into. Um, so I'm going to solve. And I like solving by matrices, so I'm going to convert it into the terms how I like to have them. Um, let's see. So we have my frictional force. Uh, never mind. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to transfer. I'm going to transfer this one to this side. So I'm going to have the 100 times 0 0.4 minus my frictional force got to be equal to 50. And that's my first equation, okay? The second equation is going to be utilizing this one. So we're going to have the 100 times 0 0.3 square of theta. And then we're gonna have minus my frictional force gotta be equal to 
negative 50 times 0 0.25 uh, one thing I want to mention is that I forgot in here a minus because, well, our angular acceleration should be going clockwise, right, in this direction. And we're assuming in here that counterclockwise is positive. So I'm missing that this should have a minus in front. So technically, all of these terms are minus. Okay, so we have a minus in here, minus in here, and minus in here. And this should be my equation 2. So my equation 2 comes from here. And just like that use uh, whichever method you guys like. I prefer uh, using matrices and when I plug this into my calculator I get a total of um, for my angular acceleration I get a total of 1.3 radians per second square and for my um, frictional force I get a total of 2 newtons. Okay now what happens? What happens is that we utilize this equation and this equation assumes non-sleeping, right? So we're not sleeping in here. Non-sleeping, that means that we have to rectify the our problems not sleeping and in order to do that, what we need to do is that our frictional force maximum has to be bigger than our current frictional force. And how do we do that? Well, our frictional force maximum is equal to our um, mu of s, which is, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the word, then my coefficient of static friction times my normal IA. And since we have both of these, we have that this is 0 0.2 multiplied by 981, which is equal to 196.2 newtons. Okay, and what is our frictional force? Well, we got it equal to two newtons. Therefore, this is bigger to two newtons and we can safely assume that we are not, uh, that our roll is not sleeping. And this is uh, our answer. So I hope you guys like this video. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.